How's it going everyone? This is my first go at making a fly time video. I think there's a bit more interest now in streamer fishing in Ireland. I just want to share a couple of proven patterns that work really well here. This one is going to be, well I call it the effing and blinding. A silly name because when you see what comes across the pool you'll be effing and blinding. Go ball. I'm going to take it slowly and go through techniques because there's a couple of nice techniques that will stand to you and uh, you can reuse. Outside of normal fly time there's a couple of important tools that you'll need. One being pliers because it's an articulated fly and the join between them is uh, with wire so in this case it's a Berkeley I think it's 20 kg pike wire or predator wire. Um, so you don't want to use your good tying scissors on that, it'll be blunt in no time. The other thing I use a lot of is um, Velcro. So I've got Velcro stuck to everything, in this case a, a marker. Um, you can pick up uh, loop and hook fasteners in pound shops and Mr. Price and all these kind of things. Um, they're sticky back. You can fix them to anything. The other important one is a dubbing spinner or dubbing twister. So it allows you to create dubbing loops essentially and spin up dubbing. So really useful too. I'm going to use Gamagatsu hooks. They're um, F314s size 2 for the back hook and size 1 for the front hook. So let's get started on the back hook. So fix it into the vise, it should be really tight. An essential for streamer fly tying is a GSP thread. Um, I'm using white, doesn't matter about the colour really. Um, but you can really pull and you need to be able to pull hard. So I'm leaving a gap um, so that's the length of the hook eye and I leave about that much behind um, and there's a reason for that. So tight touching turns are really 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 important I can't emphasize that enough um, because you don't want anything slipping. These flies take a long time to tie and you don't want them falling apart. I take out the tag end there. So first material is um, a tan marabou. I choose a nice feather. Um, that's quite a good one. What I don't like in my this is going to be the tail. So what I don't like in my tails is to have the stalk right at the end. It l just looks too uniform to me. Um, just a personal thing. So what I do is I I pull the fibers back and I pull out a couple of inches of the stalk and take my thumb and forefinger and pull and then I've got that nice nice tail. So I like about one and a half times the hook shank maybe slightly more up to two two times the hook shank. I'm going to offer it up to the hook. I take my thumb and forefinger and I use the the gap between my thumb and forefinger just to rest on top of the, the hook shank. Take my thread over loosely again and then tighten up. 
So that keeps the, the marabou on top. So I make a, a few tight turns. And there's my tail sitting in nicely. So I do a little bit of jiggery pokery because I'm fussy. I like to keep the, the stalk of the, the marabou on top of the hook shank. So if I grab it after every turn with tension, then I can keep that stalk up on top. And I'm just going to go to where I started the thread and make a turn in front and then snip it out. And then just tidy up that end nicely. And I'm back down to the back. So that's the initial tail into the fly. So next I've got some uh, brown marabou. I'm just going to use a, a small amount of that. And these are marabou bloods, so find a nice one. Again, I'm going to take about two inches off the stalk. It might seem wasteful, but it, it makes sense. So. I'm going to take about an inch of that stalk. I'll just put the scissors in there and I end up with a piece like so. I can just get that to lie. It has a natural V. I can just get it to lie either side of the hook shank and tie that in. So now we've got a little bit of tan and a little bit of dark brown and just tidy up make sure the materials are tied down. Okay so next job is the body. Um, there's a couple of elements to the body. One is this um, Semperfly Extreme String. Uh, this is a tan colour, so I'll snip off about eight inches or so, six inches perhaps. I'm going to tie that in at the back. Again, I'm using that wonky looking technique just to make sure the stuff stays in a straight line. Okay, so that's my string in. And then I'm going to make a, a dubbing loop. So use my fingers here, bring the thread back around in a loop, and then I wrap around to make sure that loop is closed. And at this point, I can go forward because that's the next time that the thread will meet the materials. So I've got a half hitch there. And I'm going to bring round my bobbin holder. And leave that sit there for a minute. So now I've got this loop of thread. And I'm going to um, put my dub and twister in okay um, I'm using a, a pearl a glister sparkle dub vineyards and I take a couple of pinches of that and I pull it apart and try and line up the the fibers so I pull it apart and lay it back on top of each other 
and I'm using the straight edge of my my thumb as a guide just to get the length um, so that's about one and a half to two inches across and I'm just straightening the fibres every time I pull them apart and line them up so what I can do then is I want a, a slight taper so smaller at the back getting bigger to the front so I can just put an angle on that there and I can put it into my loop like so so I've got that sort of a thing I'm going to keep it close to the hook shank and I'm going to spread it out and as you can see I've got it out on one side and, and tight in on the other in a straight line so once I've got that I can spin it and try and keep my other materials out of the way uh, this is where hair clips, clips and that sort of thing come in handy just keep it out of the way so I don't spin too fast because if I spin too fast I can miss something I can end up in a situation where the the fiber uh, binds down on itself and um, I have to untrap it so I've made a number of turns and I'm just going to try and pull out some of that dubbing so I've got a nice even dubbing rope what I can do then is take my um, string, chenille, whatever you want to call it and line it up and then just twist slowly so these uh, fibers of the extreme string uh, get trapped down easily so we want to just keep just uh, pulling them out preening is a good word So what we now have is a brush of our glister dubbing as a base and then the extreme string. We're going to use the rotary function of the vise. You don't have to um, if your vise is just a, a standard vise you can rotate around it but in this case it's easy to just use the rotary function and keep tension now you can see how hard I'm pulling because it's actually moving the base of the vise and touching turns and that should be enough so I catch that down with the thread I'm going to make another turn behind it just to make sure it's locked in and then in front make a few turns and start to build up the head and I can snip that out so um, next job is to um, pull out all of these fibers make it sit nicely you're looking for a kind of a woolly bugger profile so this is where the 
Velcro is invaluable and don't be afraid to really lash into it. Really press down hard and you can probably hear how hard I'm going at it. So with the, the silly string you get the odd straggler that won't play ball, you can snip them out. And then we tidy up. And you can whip finish or do half hitches or whatever. It's time for beer. That's the one. Okay. So last thing to go on the back hook is some silly legs. Two silly legs. You basically split them in half and tie in on one side. And then pull them back on the other side. You can we finish. Okay. And then we're gonna put a dab of loot just on that thread to secure it. Um just lock tight. Super glue is the best. I've been through a lot of different types of glue. Um, it's just got the right viscosity. Um, some of the gel super glues are just too thick. Um, those little tag ends of marabou are not entirely useless because when we've put our super glue up to the front, we can use pointy end to go through the hook eye and make sure that it's clear. Nothing worse than being on the riverbank and uh, having a, a gooey hook eye. So there we are, that's the, the back one done. Let's move to the front. We're going to go for the front hook which as I said, it's a size one Kamakatsu um, F314. Nice hook. We're going to catch in our thread as before and touching turns, tight turns, super important. And I'm back in line with the barb of the hook. Right, so I'm going a good way round to about there. And I can take out that little tag end. Right, so then we can grab our back hook and a piece of wire. thread it through the eye to the halfway point. So I've now got that. And I use 
craft beads, these sort of things. Uh, Yellow Brick Road, a shop on the Keys in Dublin. Uh, they have no end of beads and they're cheap. So I need two beads. And I thread them. On like so. So we've got something like that. And at the point that I finish my thread, I'm going to catch that in. And I need to make sure that I've got that I'm not too tight that the, the back hook can't swing freely, uh, but not so much that the back hook could potentially catch on the front hook of casting or fishing. And they do catch, right? It's part of the the thing they catch occasionally but um, the beads help and the correct length here so we've got about a bead length of a gap between the hook eye just so that the uh, the back hook can swing freely and then you really need to cinch down as hard as you can and touching turns are absolutely essential and you can see by how much that heavy hook wire is moving that I'm pulling down hard on that. Okay, I'm gonna leave a little bit more space there because I want to put in my dumbbell eyes and I'm just using my thumb in order to push back those tag ends and then I come over the top and just really pull down on those I'm literally trying to break the thread and pulling that hard and touching turns all the way back there's gonna come a point where I've got to snip out the access but I keep going here can go now and again we need the snips not the scissors good luck done then I'm gonna tidy that all up so that's the back hook tied in so what we can do at this point is we can go forward and we're going to put in our dumbbell eyes but while we're doing the dumbbell eyes we're going to put some super glue onto the wire just to really seal the deal. Just a thin film of it and allow it to soak in and set. Okay, um, next we've got these little uh, four mil uh, eyes, dumbbell eyes. So the way to put these in is just offer them up to the hook, make a turn around them, and then let them swing underneath because we want this fly to swim with the hook points down. Therefore, the weight has to be underneath the hook shank and that's important. Okay, so the worst thing that can happen with flies like this is that you get to a stage where the, the dumbbell eyes will rotate around the hook shank. They shouldn't. So we're gonna do a crisscross. After a couple of crisscrosses, 
we go around and really bind that down and you can feel it click and lock into place as we bound those left and right crisscrosses. Again, go around and pull as hard as you dare and around again. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so even without the, the soup glue, they're quite well locked in, but I'm going to give them a dab anyway. As I said, they shouldn't rotate. If they do, you've not done the, the locking part of the process going around the, the crisscross thread. So, we're back down to the beads and we're going to put in tail number two that goes across from the front hook find a nice feather okay so I've got my second feather and I've snipped out the first inch and a half or two inches pull back as before and I've got a nice bushy tail and I want that to extend across the body of the rear hook so I'm going to hold that there as before loose wrap initially and just keep it on top of the hook shank and then tighten down and once again I'm going to use my right hand well in your case it'd be your left or the vast majority of people would be your left so I'm right up to the eyes there take out the excess and I need to go back down to put in the brown so I've got a, a brown marabou blood I'm going to take out that middle stalk shite then I'm going to take about an inch of stock so I end up with that nice piece I'm going to put that in on top so it just envelopes the tan tie it down and happy days looks good Okay, so next job is to add our extreme string and I catch that in. You can see by how much the vise and the hook is moving that I really lash these things down hard so that they don't rotate. A sign of a, a poor quality streamer is if the materials rotate around the hook they won't last fiddling time. Um, we make our dubbing loop a little bit bigger than before because as we're making a, a taper, a teardrop shape, the, the front body should be a little bit thicker and then we wind up just behind the eye. Okay, uh, blister dubbing again. Take a couple of pinches out. And I'm gonna use my thumb as the straight edge again and line them up so just come in and split them in half and line them up again. And then I'm going to put a bit of a, a taper.
into my loop and this is where the hair clip is useful just to keep everything back out of the way and I can spin it slowly still got a marabou fibre wants to get involved starting to tighten up there and I'm going to get my velcro and dig in and pull it out Okay, once I'm happy with that, and get the silly string. Line them up and just slowly start to spin them together. Now that they're starting to form a bond, I can pick them out and keep twisting. Looking good, that's our dubbing brush so to speak, I can pull all those things back and use my rotary function on the vise. So here we are at the moment. Uh, it looks like a dog's dinner, but it's going to be a thing of beauty shortly. Let's um, take our Velcro once again, the essential item, and we can pull back against any direction whatsoever. Just really don't be shy, dig in. You can hear the noise of that. I'm really hitting it hard get the fibres out. Hit it hard. Don't be don't be scared of it. You won't do any damage. That looks great. So back behind the eye we go and we're going to do one last uh, tan and brown marabou section. So, but you need to find a good marabou supplier and not be worried about using too much. Well, Make that sit on top, right on top, like so. Catch it in. I'm turn in front and snip out the excess. A little bit of brown. A 
that's it, it's over the tan. Okay, so we're nearly there. Um, we've got our front wing in behind the eyes. Um, on this one, I like to add a couple of uh, Cree hackles. I just add a nice touch to the fly little bit like lateral lines so I'm gonna find um, two pairs of hackles so two three there two pairs of hackles line up the tips and strip off the white stuff at the back that we don't need and I'm gonna Put them in right on the side. There we go. Fold them back over a couple of turns and snip out the stalks. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing on the far side. Line up the tips and take away the white feathers at the base that we're not interested in. same length on that side. Cool. Just adds a nice texture to the fly. So the next bit is to make the the wool head. This is the final piece. Um, so I'm going to use some of this uh, brown sculpin wool. Just got a lump of it. I'm going to take some of my uh, glister, put a chunk of that to add a bit of flash, put that in there. Um, I've got some grey streamer wing. I'm going to take a, a pinch of that, throw it in there, and finally. Um, some wing and flash. This is kind of a, a pinky wing and flash. I'm just going to take a few pinches of that. So I've got them all on top of each other. It's a, an ugly mess and I'm just going to blend them together and it's a, a case of just pull them apart, line them up, line them on top of each other just keep them, pulling them apart, landing them on top of each other until it's nicely blended together and I've got that lovely colour. So I'm going to split it in half because I'm going to use, I'm going to lighten this piece for the bottom and I'm going to use this piece for the, the top of the fly. So I've got that chunk and it's, you can see it's quite long so I'm going to cut it in half And further blend it together so that I don't have any straight edges. That looks good now. I can split that. Just lay it on top. Half and half. couple of turns and push that back. So on the bottom 
blend in a little bit more white. That's a little bit brighter. Cut that in half and blend them together. In on the bottom. Tight turns again. So that's behind the hook done. Come forward in front of the hook and we're going to add our darker colour on top. then the lighter colour again on the bottom. I'm just going to line these fibres up a little bit more. Pull that back and put a few turns in just to steady everything and make sure that it kicks back a little bit. hitch in and with the GSP you can really feel it <coughs> kick on and I brush it all out I make it sit nicely. I'm going to come in on the bottom, just snip it at an angle, take all the loose fibres out, and just shape the head, expose the eyes on both sides. Give it a haircut and see how we're doing. So less is more, just go gently at it. Don't um, don't chop up half big clumps. Just take your time. It's a thread tag end there. I'm just going to clean up. Looks good. So I'm happy. That's the effing and blinding. Um, you know, there's quite a lot of flies that look similar. I mean, it's a, an overgrown woolly bugger with a wool head. The wool head we could probably attribute originally to Galoops, a uh, boogeyman or something like that. Um, but 
got a dense front end. Looks pretty cool and it fishes uh, really well. So I hope that helps and some pattern. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Drop uh, any questions in the comments and please uh, subscribe if you want to see me do more of these things. It takes me <laughs> a good bit of time to get them set up and um, make it look good. But if you're interested, um, there's a lot of different patterns I can go through. So let me know. Thanks.